What I'd like to do is open the floor, and I think we'll just get rid of the microphone because otherwise we're just going to be tripping all over it. So if people can't hear, we'll reintroduce it. And so people, just, you know, put your hand up and I'll sort of keep a tally and we'll go through. Um, and feel free, if you came in late, and actually I know a couple of you actually spoke to me about this even, if you came in late, don't feel like you can't ask a question. Um, and feel free to direct it either to a specific individual or to the panel in general. Okay, so we'll start back there. Hi, I'm sorry, I've just been thinking about this whole time. I, I mean, I can argue about the value of education, but I'm a veteran. I went to school, got my degree, and this is, I mean, this is the question I have. Veterans, 80% of the Montgomery Jack of 9 is going to online for profit schools. I have trouble explaining to my soldiers, hey, go to a brick and mortar school, PSU, that's going to be around for everyone. It's region and credits on national credit. Those are money students. They're all non traditionals, they're all probably minorities from small towns. But yet, in Portland State, you have one full-time veteran's rep and two students. Why is it, and that should be minting money for you guys, why haven't you guys reached out to this community? If I go to any education center in the United States for the Army, there's Central Texas University, University of Phoenix, boom, set up, and they will, boom, I give you my application, they got my money. Why aren't you making it easier for veterans to come to school? Why aren't you tapping federal resources? I'll take a step at that. Thank you for asking the question. I think it's a really important question that PSU and other institutions in the state face. And I, I guess I would say that we've had a really, I think, important conversation that's begun on our campus about the role of veteran students in the last two or three years. And part of that conversation is prompted by more and more students like yourself coming back and being in our classrooms. And one of the things that I, I'm really proud of on our campus is that we've had a lot of, I think, really significant conversations, particularly through the Student Affairs Division, my colleague Jackie Balser, who, who uh, is vice president there, around the, the particular needs of veteran students. So I would say that on our campus, there has been increased attention and emphasis around how to serve that population of students well. Um, and I think that that conversation is expanding. The other thing I would say is that we have the GOLD program at Portland State. So the GOLD uh, guys work with me. Um, and in fact, I think I'm meeting with them just next week. And so I'll talk with them and, and bring your concern back to them because that is oftentimes my best partnership in terms of advocating for veteran students on our campus. And I would be happy to hear from you if you have specific things that we can be doing better to serve that population of students on our campus. I would want to know what those things are. In some ways, I have to point out, I mean, Portland State was founded in response to veterans' needs. It's our history, it's who we are, and I think in some ways, you know, we talk uh, on our campus in really rich ways about diversity on our campus, and we've elevated that conversation through the new Chief Diversity Officer. Talking about veterans in the context of diversity is really important, and it's a way to elevate that conversation and broaden that conversation. So. I, I would be happy to take this offline and talk to you more about your specific needs and what you would recommend so that I can inform the discussion that is happening here. Um, if, if I could jump in for just a moment, I've had some vets approach me as a faculty member saying they feel that faculty members often don't understand the specific needs that they bring into the classroom. and. I must say that that's definitely true in my case, mm -hmm. that I often have felt that I wish that there were more training yes. specific to what vets bring into the classroom. So if you would like to talk to me, I'd, I'd be really happy to organize a training session or a kind of workshop for faculty. And I've, I've, I've spoken um, with some students about bringing in someone from the VA who, who could specialize in doing that kind of training. So Melody, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to follow up on that. We can absolutely follow up on that. And one of the things we did last year was we had a training for chairs on our campus. So the department chairs very frequently are the right leadership level to deal with what's going on in the classrooms and bring critical and new information back to their faculty. So we did hold a similar training panel um, for department chairs last year for that very reason. And I think that you know chairs and faculty members who are 
um, literally in the classroom with our students are the ones who are hearing student, from students most directly and, and again need the support to support their students effectively. So we can take what we did for the chairs group last year and broaden that for faculty members. I'd be happy to help facilitate that. Can I just jump in and say that um, the, uh, there is a lot of interest in the legislature in making sure that more veterans uh, go to higher education and are successful in higher education. Uh, I suspect that one of the metrics that we will have when we're looking at funding will be number of veterans in, number of veterans out. But one of the specific challenges that we're wrestling with, uh, and this really is connected to the issue of quality as well, is we have a lot of veterans who uh, have acquired a lot of training and a lot of skills while they're in the military. Uh, but in many cases, it's difficult for them to translate that experience into credits and then ultimately into a certificate or degree. Um, we passed some legislation last time uh, to make that easier. Uh, and you know, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but the whole question of giving credit for prior learning and prior experience, which I think is going to be a, an important part of our, our getting to that 40-40-20 goal, also bumps up against questions of quality, right? Where we're, we see a certain amount of resistance from faculty, you know, who believe, well, no, you don't really achieve um, you know, the group dynamics kinds of experience uh, adequately from that experience, you have to take my whatever, Organization 101 course. That's the only way you can gain that. And so, and, and so it's a struggle, I think, within the institutions. Um, we have to wrestle with that because we have to make it easier for people to, uh, to get those degrees. And for us as a state, frankly, not to pay for courses that students already have the expertise in. You know, we, we just can't afford that. We'd rather use the money to bring more people into the system. But that does bump up against quality. Can I add just one thing from the yeah. Student Association perspective? Also, I think it's really kind of a building of learning and being aware of veterans on campus. And I think that, um, that students are most acutely aware, like you said yourself. And so the Student Association um, supported the bill that Representative Deborah was talking about in terms of folks being able to get credit um, for the work that they do. But I think the faculty identifying the need for training is something that started within student associations on each of the campuses with the increasing development of um, veterans and family student associations or other spaces that are safe on campus that are aware of things like PTSD and also aware of uh, the, the needs of support systems and of reintegrating into a college setting is just really different. So I think there's some good practices of trainings that even folks like our organization are doing to make conferences or to make classrooms or to make um, spaces on campus uh, more comfortable, but but it takes time, and, and I think you standing up and asking that question is really good, and also putting pressure on your student leaders and, and folks on campuses to keep providing um, spaces for veterans is really important. 